Reverend Insanity. Chapter 201. Resting at the shallow beach while lending goo worms. Five days ago, Fang Yuan rebirthed at King Mao Mountain. Back then, he worked together with Bai Ning Bing in the Blood Barrier, and after his slaughter, he obtained much post battle loot. But these goo worms all had injuries in them. For the past five days, Fang Yuan had been floating around Zhang Mountain, so they lacked food and all died consecutively. For healing goo worms, Fang Yuan always lacked one, and he did not find one he liked either. A pity my goo worms all died in the self detonation. Otherwise, I would not be injured to this extent. Bai Ning Bing sighed towards the sky. But Fang Yuan laughed. Don't be too pessimistic. Not everything needs goo worms to be resolved. Oh, Bai Ning Bing looked over with a questioning gaze. He saw Fang Yuan secretly activating his primeval essence, shooting something out of his mouth as a red light appeared. A flower goo resembling a lantern, rotating on its own and floating in midair. It was the Tusita flower. Fang Yuan willed, and the Tusita flower glowed in red as several objects flew out of it while wrapped in bright red light. There were bandages, medicine cans, and small medicine bottles. Small medicine bottles contain powder that can disinfect and diminish inflammation, you just need to use a little. In the medicine cans, there is medicine paste that can stop bleeding and form clots. You should know how to use a bandage, right? Fang Yuan on saying so, split these items into two and gave a portion to Bai Ning Bing. These are all methods used by mortals, but I did learn about them in the academy. Bai Ning Bing received them, pouting, You sure planned ahead? Saying so, she then opened the large medicine can and a disgusting smell rushed up into her nose, causing her to jump back and scream, Why is it so smelly? Fang Yuan laughed, not replying. He took off his shirt, pouring the powder from the small medicine can, causing his wounds to feel a sharp burning pain like fire. Next he opened the big medicine can, where inside was the mud-like medicine paste that was a blackish green and smelled horrible. But Fang Yuan was used to it in his previous life, not even flinching. He took out a handful of blackish green paste and spread it on his wounds, his actions being extremely refined. Next, he used the bandage and wrapped it many layers over the wound, quickly taking care of his injury. Because of the medicine paste, the injury area felt a cooling sensation, quickly replacing the fiery pain felt earlier. Your paste is quite useful, on one side, Bai Ning Bing was still taking care of her injury as she gasped. Her robe was torn, and after applying the medicine, her breasts and nipples were almost exposed, but she did not have any reaction to it. While using the medicine, she even sighed. Sigh, thinking about it now, if only we had a healing goo, that would be great. Fang Yuan took a look at her before activating the Tusita flower and taking out two sets of clothes. He had prepared sufficiently, having intended to leave the village in the first place, so he bought many sets of clothing. Plus, Bai Ning Bing and his age were quite close together. As they had similar body size, his clothes suited her well too. Take this. He handed a set of clothes to Bai Ning Bing. Bai Ning Bing took the clothing and chuckled, feeling slightly shocked, to think you prepared to this extent. Precaution averts perils on the safe side, Fang Yuan replied casually, taking off his remaining clothes and even his drenched socks into new sets. Immediately, with new clothing, he felt much better. Bai Ning Bing also changed her clothes, throwing the torn white robe on the beach, but her expression was not looking good, for although they were out of danger at the moment, after changing clothes and bandaging her injuries, she also noticed the changes to her body. What do you plan to do from now? When are you returning the Yang Gu to me? She walked up, frowning as she asked. Fang Yuan picked up the black robe and socks that he changed out of. Didn't I say it before, we are going to buy Gu Mountain now. As for that Yang Gu, at least wait until I am rank three first. Bai Ning Bing frowned even more tightly, her pitch getting higher, I have to wait until you are rank three. She had never thought that one day she would get into such an awkward state. A proper man transformed into a woman. After the crisis of life and death was over, this strange sensation entered her mind. 
if possible, she did not want to endure it for even a second more. Fang Yuan raised his head and looked at her, not speaking. He walked to the side of the river and used the water to wash his clothing. Although there were holes on his black robe, it could still be fixed, unlike binding Bing's white robe. He did not know how long he would need to stay in the wilderness, so he could not afford to waste the clothing. Bai Ningbing was a smart person, and Fang Yuan's silence made her realize her true predicament. Right now, she had rank 3 cultivation, but not a single goo worm. Even if she had, she could not do anything to Fang Yuan. The Yang Gu was refined already by Fang Yuan, so as long as he willed it, it could instantly detonate itself. The Yin Yang rotation Gu was a pair, and if it was destroyed, Bai Ningbing would never be able to return into being a male. Looking at Fang Yuan's back view, Bai Ningbing gritted her teeth, feeling extremely frustrated. To think that she, the Bai clan genius, had gotten into such a state, manipulated by others. This feeling caused the arrogant and prideful Bai Ningbing to feel extremely unhappy. Now we do not have a healing Gu, so if we get into danger, what can we do? The problem is not just that, but I do not have a single Gu worm with me, I have no fighting strength. No, I have to capture some wild goo worms and refine them, otherwise I won't even have any strength to protect myself. Bai Ningbing was rambling on when her stomach suddenly started growling. Damn, she held her stomach, feeling a strong sense of hunger. Hey, guy who is washing clothes, take out some jerky, I'm starving. While floating in the raft for five days, they relied on Fang Yuan's jerky as food. Although the jerky was tough, with the texture of wood when chewed on, it could fill the stomach and provide energy. Fang Yuan stood up, using his hands to wring the water off the black robe, shrugging it around before answering Bai Ningbing, Why are you so anxious? Hold this. Bai Ningbing frowned, taking the black robe in reluctance. Fang Yuan called out the two-seed of flour again, taking out a bag of jerky. Bai Ningbing grabbed it immediately, chewing on the tough meat. She chewed until her jaws hurt, but she was extremely satisfied. Fang Yuan looked at her, smiling. When did this Bai clan genius ever starve before? Thinking of his previous life, he knew exactly how she felt. Bai Ningbing ate another piece of jerky, licking her dry lips. This reduces hunger, but is way too tough. Sigh, having meat to eat, it is already a huge blessing. Fang Yuan's smile became even more intense, for under Bai Ningbing's astonished gaze, he took out an iron pot. You even brought a pot? That's great. We can use water to cook the dried meat. We can just take water from the river, but we need firewood to start a fire, so we'll have to chop down some wood. Saying so, Bai Ningbing looked around, feeling troubled. They were at a shallow beach, with one side being water and the other being a tall cliff. On top of the cliff was dense vegetation, but there was not a single piece of wood on the beach itself. Bai Ningbing wanted wood, so she would need to climb up the cliff and chop the trees. If this was back when she still had her goo worms, it would be a piece of cake easily done. But now that she had nothing, wanting to climb up this slippery cliff was too tough. Bai Ningbing felt troubled secretly, but at this moment Fang Yuan took out some coal stones. Coal stones were better than wood, and Bai Ningbing was naturally surprised when she saw this. Soon after, Fang Yuan took out some kerosene and flint as well as a metal rack. Soon, he set it up. On seeing this, Bai Ningbing became serious, her blue eyes staring at Fang Yuan. Your preparations are way too much. Did you already have had thoughts of leaving King Mao Mountain long ago? Fang Yuan's preparation was overboard. With him bringing even these things, the smart Bai Ningbing found something amiss, obviously. What do you think? Fang Yuan smiled, not answering her, but pointing to the metal pot. You can go get some water now. Bai Ningbing gritted her teeth. Fang Yuan's attitude was annoying her. She took some water, while Fang Yuan had already started a fire. First he got the water to boil in the pot, then he threw a bag of jerky inside. Soon after, the smell of fragrant meat could be felt. Bai Ningbing sniffed, subconsciously licking her lips. 
Fang Yuan took out his chopsticks and ladle and started having a feast with Bai Ning Bing. The cooked meat was soft and could be easily swallowed with a few bites, while the boiling meat soup caused the two to feel warm on the inside. The only problem was that this river water had some sand in it, giving a gritty texture when eating. But under such situations, having such treatment was already nothing to be displeased about. I'm not that full yet, let's cook another half bag of meat. Bai Ning Bing was not satisfied yet, saying as she touched her tummy. Fang Yuan immediately rejected, no more, we have to conserve our food. Why so stingy, see this forest behind us? How many wild animals could there be? Bai Ning Bing said in displeasure. Fang Yuan gave her a stare, of course I know there's animals in there, but that also means wild beasts. How many wild beasts can you take care of now? What if we meet a beast group? What if we get ambushed by wild goo worms? Even if we kill the wild beasts, if their meat have poison, can we eat it? Can you differentiate between poisonous goo worms? Bai Ning Bing stood dumbfounded, unable to retort. Fang Yuan snorted. Bai Ning Bing was the Bai clan genius, so she naturally was full of utter arrogance, thus this was enough already. If he continued lecturing her, she would hit her limit. He sat down cross-legged, taking down the pan and hanging his black robe on the metal rack, using the residue heat from the coal stone to dry it. Fang Yuan continued, It's getting late. Let's stay here for tonight and continue exploring the forest tomorrow. I specially chose this area with cliff on three sides, so there would be little wild beasts that can reach us, thus this is relatively safer. But we cannot be complacent, let's keep watch in intervals. This was the benefit of having two people. Fang Yuan willed and summoned the chainsaw golden centipede and sky canopy goo. These two goo worms, I'll lend them to you for the time being. Get familiar with them, Fang Yuan said. He was only a rank 1 initial stage cultivation, so it was near impossible for him to use a rank 3 goo worm. Even with a grade recovery speed and the Heavenly Essence Treasure Lotus, he could not display the true power of a Rank 3 Goo Worm. He might as well give it to the Rank 3 Bai Ning Bing. Bai Ning Bing received the Goo Worm, looking deeply at Fang Yuan. Between Goo Masters, Goo Worms could be lent. In the Goo Worms, a Goo Masters will resides. As long as the Master acknowledges it, others can also communicate with the Goo Worm and use their powers. Of course, it is not as convenient as a goo worm one refines personally. Also, as long as the original owner wills it and changes his mind, the others would immediately lose their ability to command the goo worm. But even so, goo masters rarely lent their goo worms to others. Although they were forced by the situation, Fang Yuan's actions were extremely unrestrained, and this caused Bai Ning Bing to become alert. Chapter 202 Crocodile Killing Intent, A Young Girl's Sorrowful Call Chainsaw Golden Centipede Bai Ning Bing mumbled with a complex expression as she stroked the dark golden carapace of this rank 3 goo. She had suffered quite a lot due to this chainsaw golden centipede during her battle with Fang Yuan. Who would have thought that there would be a time where Fang Yuan himself would lend it to her? The way Fang Yuan used the chainsaw golden centipede had left a lasting impression on her. Bai Ning Bing immediately copied Fang Yuan's method and waved the chainsaw golden centipede like a greatsword. From time to time, she willed the chainsaw golden centipede to lengthen or shorten, waving it around like a whip. The silver blades of the chainsaw rotated and cut through the air, producing a strange distortion of the light. Sky Canopy Goo she put the sky canopy goo in her aperture and inwardly poured white silver primeval essence on it with her brows raised. Immediately, her body was covered with an armor of white light. Fate really works mysteriously. To think there would be a day where I would be using your goo, she sighed while looking towards Fang Yuan. Fang Yuan was silent. He was sitting cross-legged beside the warm coal with his eyes closed. His attention was on his aperture, where the full primeval sea of an agrade aptitude appeared in front of him. 90%. His aptitude had only been just over 40%, and now it had increased by more than double. 
although my cultivation has dropped from rank 3 to rank 1, with my years of hard work wasted, it is still all worth it. Fang Yuan was satisfied. In a Gu master's cultivation journey, there were three most important things. Aptitude, resources, and Gu worms. None of these three aspects could be lacking. Previously, Fang Yuan only had C-grade aptitude and had to resort to all kinds of means of resources and goo worms to try to make up for the deficiency in his aptitude. Those years spent in King Mao Mountain had been quite difficult and exhausting. His cultivation speed had been pretty good, but that was the result of him exhausting all the means available to him and taking high risks. If his aptitude had been a grade at that time, he would have faced a completely different scene and be able to easily reach rank 3. Such a twist of fate, I now have an a grade aptitude, but don't have the safe environment to grow up like in the village. Additionally, the resources and the goo worms I have now can't compare to before. Fang Yuan was now wandering outside his home ground, and with his weak cultivation he could face mortal dangers at any moment. This situation naturally couldn't compare with the safe and stable environment back at King Mao Mountain. And of course, there would be no stable trading areas to exchange for mutual benefits. Fortunately, with the Heavenly Essence Treasure Lotus, the greatest problem that is resources is resolved, so at least there will be no worries before I reach rank 3. Fang Yuan looked through his 90% green copper primeval sea, where a blue and white lotus had taken roots in the depths of his aperture. Its petals were healthy and plump, giving off a holy and immortal aura. This heavenly essence treasure lotus was a rank 3 and had an enormous potential for development. Just to refine it, Gu Yu clan's foundation spirit spring had to be wasted. It was equivalent to a miniature portable spirit spring, and back when Fang Yuan still had rank 3 cultivation, it continuously recovered Fang Yuan's primeval essence, giving him the recovery speed of a B-grade aptitude. Rank 3 cultivation possessed white silver primeval essence. Fang Yuan was now only a rank 1 initial stage with green copper primeval essence. With the Heavenly Essence Treasure Lotus in his aperture, his primeval essence recovery speed was raised to an extreme rate. If I only use rank 1 goo, my primeval essence recovery speed would be shocking and almost inexhaustible. Using one or two rank 2 goo worms might cause the primeval C to decrease, but the recovery speed would continuously balance it, causing it to be relatively stable. Using a rank 3 goo will exhaust the primeval essence very rapidly, and the consumption would far surpass the recovery speed. My primeval sea would be thoroughly dry within few moments, Fang Yuan calculated in his mind. After all, he now only possessed green copper primeval essence, and that too was the initial stage jade green primeval essence, the quality was far too low. Other than heavenly essence treasure lotus, Fang Yuan still had other goo. First of all was his vital goo, Spring Autumn Cicada. This rank 6 goo was numbered 7 in the list of mysterious goo. Once it turned into one's vital goo, it could no longer be taken out of the aperture and was now residing in the middle of the aperture. After going through another rebirth, its aura was no longer the same. Its bright yellow-green light was completely gone and now looked dispirited and extremely weak. It was concealing its figure, and as time flowed, it silently absorbed time from the river of time and began another round of convalescence. Fang Yuan comprehended inwardly, I absolutely can't use spring autumn cicada within a short period of time. In such a dangerous state, if I used it, it would be absorbed by the river of time, and I would just be throwing away my life by self-detonating. Without the pressure from spring autumn cicada, other goo worms could freely let out their instincts. Four kinds of light flashed around the rank two four flavors liquor worms chubby body as it swam around the surface of the primeval sea, enjoying the moment. The carp fossil-like hidden scales goo calmly laid on the bottom of the sea, letting the primeval sea water cleanse its scales. A black beetle with a pair of iron pincers on its head was soaring in the air above the sea. It was the plunder goo. And similarly, spiraling with it and having a fun time was the white-armored yang goo of the yin-yang rotation goo. 
Rank 4 Blood Skull Goo was lying deep in the sea, bright red blood light occasionally flashing on its surface. As for the other goo worms, Blood Moon Goo had turned into a red crescent imprint on Fang Yuan's palm. Earth Communication Ear Grass Goo had turned into one of Fang Yuan's ears and wouldn't normally show up. The Tusita flower resided on Fang Yuan's tongue as a tattoo. Sky Canopy Goo and Chainsaw Golden Centipede were lent to Bai Ningbing. Calculating the numbers, Fang Yuan possessed a total of 12 goo worms. This was a truly big number. Generally speaking, it was normal for a low-level goo master to have two or three goo. When one reached rank four or five, they would raise this number to four or five. Even divine investigator Tai Zhu Leng only raised about seven goo. Do not be fooled by Gu Yu First Head or Lord Sky Crane, both were special cases and were old monsters with centuries of accumulation. The amount of goo worms possessed by Fang Yuan was three to four times more than normal goo masters. More numbers meant huge economical burden on the goo masters along with the pressure of managing and raising them. Fang Yuan may have chosen his goo carefully with most of them being easy to raise, but with the limited goods and resources in the Tusita flower now, Fang Yuan was under a huge burden. Facing the brunt of this burden was the Four Flavors Liquor Worm as its food was fine liquors. There was a lot of wine stored in the Tusita flower, but it would only be able to support the Four Flavors Liquor Worm for half a year. I need to find new source of liquors within these six months, or I have no choice but to reverse refine the Four Flavors Liquor Worm back to Liquor Worm. Next was the Plunder Goo. Plunder Goo's food was difficult to find, and the amount of the food stored for it in the Tusita flower could only last for five months. Then, it was the Earth Communication Ear Grass. Earth Communication Ear Grass's food was ginseng roots, but thankfully there were a lot of it in the Tusita flower, enough to support it for a year. As for the Blood Skull Goo and Blood Moon Goo, both required blood, which needed to be thawed out properly. And for the yin-yang rotation goo, if they were intact and formed a complete Taiji light sphere, they would be self-sufficient in feeding on the transformation of the yin and yang kai. However, only yang goo was left now. Fang Yuan would need to take out some time to release it and let it absorb the yang kai in the air. Raising this yang goo was very important. Only with the yang goo could Fang Yuan suppress Bai Ning Bing gaining a cheap bodyguard and a guarantee for survival. This signified that Fang Yuan couldn't casually enter mountain and underground caves. If by any chance were he to be trapped in a special situation where Yang Kai wasn't available, the Yang Gu would die from starvation, and at that time, Bai Ning Bing in all his fury and despair would become the greatest enemy to Fang Yuan. All in all, Fang Yuan was in an awkward situation now. He had a lot of high-ranked goo in his possession, rank 3, rank 4, and even a rank 6 goo. But the unfortunate thing was that he only had rank 1 cultivation at the moment. To him now, using the high-ranked goo was quite troublesome and inconvenient. The more crucial point was that he seriously lacked goo with healing and movement abilities. Now what I need to do is gather some wild goo worms and resolve these issues. If only I get lucky and come across a suitable goo, being able to escape from the shuttle swordfish groups could be considered my good luck. But there is no way I could be so lucky every time. After Fang Yuan sorted out his thoughts, he slowly opened his eyes with a grave expression. When he had just opened his eyes, he saw Bai Ning Bing walking over with a white eggshell on his hand. Look at this. I was just trying out the chainsaw golden centipede and drilled the ground, but to think there is an egg hidden under this beach. Too bad it was smashed by chainsaw golden centipede, Bai Ning Bing said. This egg was the size of half of a wash basin, and the white eggshell was thoroughly smashed, and only some yolk remained in it. Fang Yuan only took a glance at this eggshell before his expression turned tense. This is bad, this is the egg of a six-foot crocodile. Is this beach a breeding ground for the six-footed crocodiles? He quickly stood up. Quick, use the chainsaw golden centipede and check if there are more of such eggs in this beach. Bai Ning Bing's gaze shook and pointed behind Fang Yuan, it's too late, look. 
Fang Yuan turned around and saw hundreds of dead logs floating towards the beach from the river. The dead logs came ashore and revealed their true forms. They were all enormous crocodiles. These crocodiles had thick carapaces, sharp teeth, and three pairs of feet. Right now, their bloodshot eyes were tightly staring at Bai Ning Bing. Six-legged crocodile groups, Bai Ning Bing subconsciously loosened her hand under the glares of the crocodiles. The white eggshell fell onto the sand, smashing further in the process, and what little yolk left in it seeped into the sand. Hiss! The six-legged crocodiles hissed in rage before charging forward on their six legs towards the two youths. At the same time, in King Mao Mountain, in the former site of Gu Yu Village, Snow covered everything and glaciers had formed everywhere. A group of people were standing on the snow like iron nails nailed into this white world. Father, Tai Ruo Nan kneeled down on the snow and shouted out her father's name with tears flowing down her face. Five to six days ago, Tai Zhu Leng had an intense battle with the Gu Yu first head, but when he was at death's door, he kept his daughter's safety in mind and sent out the mountain giant puppet Gu and Iron Fist grappling Gu. The mountain giant puppet Gu formed into a copper mask and covered Tai Ryuo Nan's face, protecting her. The Iron Fist grappling Gu turned into a giant hand, taking her away from the mess at King Mao Mountain. However, these two had already been infected by the blood frenzy goo and had turned into a pool of blood not long after completing their tasks. Tai Ryuo Nan rushed back to King Mao Mountain in a crazed state, but on the way, she was besieged by a group of beasts. In the moment of her great danger, Tai family's reinforcements had arrived. They had come because of Tai Zhu Leng. Tai Zhu Leng always executed matters earnestly. Just to be safe, he had sent a letter for reinforcements to their clan. Tai Ryo Nan was able to rush here with the help of the reinforcements. However, the scene that appeared before her was a mountain filled with ice and snow where all the living beings were frozen and there were no traces of her father. She and the Tai family reinforcements searched for several days and nights before finally accepting the cruel reality. Divine Investigator had fallen. Her father had died. Father, Tai Ruo Nan cried out with a hoarse voice filled with extreme sorrow like the wail of the wild goose. Chapter 203, Each with Their Own Objectives Divine Investigator died in battle. This is the glory of a man of the Tai family. Lady Ruo Nan, my condolences, a young Gu master behind her consoled. On the snowy grounds, Tai Ruo Nan kneeled as her crying voice became weaker, her shoulders shivering and her fists tightly clenched as the snow melted in her hands into water. The young Gu master frowned, continuing, Throughout the past few days, we have scoured the entire battlefield. We saw some traces left behind, and it seems there were a few that managed to escape this battlefield. Divine Investigator's letter talked about the Blood Sea Inheritance. I'm worried that the demonic Goo Master who inherited the Blood Sea Inheritance might be among these survivors. When Tai Ruo Nan heard this, she stopped crying. She stood up from the icy ground as the freezing winds blew, her hagged face showing determination. The feud of killing my father is greater than anything. Whoever the killer is, I will definitely find out the truth. The young girl's voice was hoarse. But when she spoke, her gaze and tone became very determined. The young Gu master sighed, Investigations definitely have to be done. Our Thai family people cannot die with injustice. But Lady Ryuo Nan, you don't have to go. Before coming here, the clan leader already informed us to bring you back to the village safely. Tai Ryuo Nan stared with wide-opened eyes, What, don't think of chasing me away? The young Gu master smiled, looking at the sky. In the azure sky, there were several clouds floating. Tai Ruo Nan was about to argue some more, but suddenly her iris shrunk, you. Before she finished, her eyes closed and she laid on the snow softly, falling asleep. Gui, the young Gu master called. Here. I order your group to escort Lady Ruo Nan back safely. Yes. Gui Yi hesitated. Then what about you, young master? Me? I have to follow the Yellow Dragon River and chase after them. The young Gu master laughed arrogantly. 
The waters from the Yellow Dragon River raged on and winds blew as several hundred six-legged crocodiles ascended the beach, attacking Fang Yuan and Bai Ningbing. Damn! Bai Ningbing gritted her teeth, feeling a strong pressure in her heart. If it was before, this crocodile group was nothing to her. One ice blade storm and they would be finished. But now, she only had the sky canopy goo and chainsaw golden centipede, while also lacking the northern dark ice soul physique. Her blue irises quickly swept the environment as Bai Ning Bing scolded. What a great place you chose! With three sides as cliffs, how can we escape? Why so frantic? It's only a hundred beast group, not a thousand one, otherwise we would be dead meat. A hundred beast group means we still have a chance of survival, we can kill them all. Fang Yuan quickly kept his clothes, racks, metal pots, and retreated behind Bai Ning Bing. Fang Yuan was extremely confident, causing Bai Ning Bing's heart to feel slightly at ease. What are you staring at? Go kill them. Fang Yuan swept his gaze at her, urging, Why else did I lend you goo worms? Don't forget I have the Yang Gu. Bastard, Bai Ning Bing stared in rage, her heart burning as she cursed. No one knew if she was scolding the six-legged crocodiles, Fang Yuan or both. But no matter what, she held the chainsaw golden centipede and rushed up. Buzz buzz buzz, razors rotated violently as the aggressiveness of a rank three goo worm appeared, causing the six-legged crocodile to halt in their steps. A group of ugly maggots, Bai Ning Bing chuckled, rushing up and slashing. A six-legged crocodile was hit on its stomach, crying out as sparks flew, cut into two by the razors. Fresh blood spewed on Bai Ning Bing's face and clothes as she felt the stimulation of blood and intention of battle appeared on her face. Swish, swish, swish. Chainsaw Golden Centipede hacked and slashed like a tornado passing through. Twenty or so six-legged crocodiles died in succession. The situation became better instantly, but Fang Yuan's expression grew dim, shouting loudly, avoid the six-legged crocodile's back and attack their stomach. Ha ha ha, what an aggressive goo worm, much better than the ice blade goo, I like it. Bai Ning Bing ignored him and laughed loudly. Even though she turned into a woman and was a jade beauty like an ice fairy, the moment she battled her male instincts would cause her to turn into a battle maniac but eventually, her attacks started to become slower and weaker. What's happening? Earlier, I could slash a six-legged crocodile in half, but now, even after three hits, I can only severely injure it. Bai Ning Bing raised the chainsaw golden centipede and looked, only to see that the razors were dented and the sharpness was greatly reduced. She was born smart, immediately thinking of Fang Yuan's advice, clicking her tongue. A large six-legged crocodile rushed up to her and leapt. It opened its large, bloody mouth, covering Bai Ning Bing with its shadow. You are looking for death. Bai Ning Bing moved her tiny body, raising the chainsaw golden centipede and slashing at the six-legged crocodile's belly. Pew. After a light noise, the six-legged crocodile's belly was cut open, forming a severe injury. This unlucky six-legged crocodile was still in the air as a large amount of blood poured out from its wound and its intestines fell out. With a plop, it landed on the beach, dyeing the sand red. Its body twitched a few times before it stopped moving completely. It was completely dead. So easy, seeing such effectiveness, Bai Ning Bing raised her eyebrows in shock. Six-legged crocodile's back was tough as armor, but comparatively its belly was very soft. The white belly was their weakness. With 500 years of experience Fang Yuan was clear of such information. But Bai Ning Bing was born on King Mao Mountain, never being outside and only had narrow education. Thus she did not know much. Howl, the crocodiles cried out. After tens of crocodiles were killed, the wild beasts were infuriated and started to turn wild under the threat of death. Countless red eyes stared at Bai Ning Bing in hatred. Wild beasts had limited intelligence. The lightning lichen had human intelligence, but it was an exception among the many species of wild beasts. These wild beasts would always treat the most dangerous enemies as the biggest threat and the first to eliminate. 
As for Fang Yuan who stayed at the back, they ignored him. Come. Bai Ning Bing moved forward instead. She was not someone stubborn, and after that hit, she immediately changed her tactics. The centipede tail stabbed onto the beach as its body shrunk, then expanded and slashed at the field with the razors. Six-legged crocodile's stomach were easily slashed as blood and intestines spewed. Crocodiles after crocodiles fell as binding being killed as she wished. At the rate this is going, the crocodile group will be nothing to be afraid of. What truly threatens me is not these beast groups, but Fang Yuan. As the situation turned better, Binding being considered in her heart, having second thoughts. The Yang Gu was in Fang Yuan's hands, causing Bai Ning Bing to be restrained, and she had to obey Fang Yuan. But he was the Bai clan genius, thus there was great arrogance in his heart. How could he resign himself to this? If I slaughter Fang Yuan, will I be able to get that Yang Gu? Bai Ning Bing's eyes shone with coldness as a thought appeared in her mind. But once this thought emerged, it was rejected. She understand Fang Yuan like she understood herself. With Fang Yuan's personality, which was tough as steel along with his ruthless methods and meticulous thoughts, if he really was going to die, he would destroy the Yang Gu 100% of the time, there were no other possibilities. Moreover, I do not have a Gu Worm at all. Sky Canopy Gu, Chainsaw Golden Centipede, they are all his. No, no matter what, I have to get my own Gu Worms. Fang Yuan's lips curled, staring at the battlefield. Bai Ming Bing's movements became slower while her eyes turned more shiny and he saw all of it. Towards her little thoughts, Fang Yuan was crystal clear. He did not find it strange, he understood Bai Ning Bing's predicament, he would have had the same thoughts if he was in that situation. They were both arrogant fellows, how could they submit to others and be another's puppet? But situations surpass men, so what if it's a genius? Ha <laughs> ha. Fang Yuan laughed coldly in his heart. Fang Yuan was confident with such a strong bargaining chip in his hand, Bai Ning Bing was like a butterfly trapped in a net. It was natural to struggle at first, but eventually she would land in his palms, understanding the situation and becoming tamed, turning into a useful pawn piece. The battle continued. Large numbers of six-legged crocodiles laid on this beach. Bai Ning Bing breathed roughly, sweating profusely as her attacks slowed down. Out of stamina, strength was always her weakness. When fighting Fang Yuan back then, many times did she have the disadvantage due to the strength of two boars. Now that she fought for an hour, her stamina was running out. After all, they did not sleep for almost five days when floating on the bamboo raft, and even after the rest, it was too short to recover. What caused her to be even more frustrated were those two lumps on her chest. Every time she moved, these two burdens moved along, causing her to feel very uncomfortable. Fang Yuan, are you not helping? She breathed roughly, calling. Saying so, she dodged the attack of a six-legged crocodile narrowly, pressing on her weak knees and standing up. Fang Yuan said coldly, Once I help, I will attract the attack of many six-legged crocodiles. You want me to die. If I die, you will never get the Yanggu. Three six-legged crocodiles approached, and Bai Ning Bing had no choice but to retreat. She was tired to the point of fainting as her stamina reached its limits, and she saw darkness in front of her. The chainsaw golden centipede appeared even more heavy, constantly dragging her towards the ground. She gritted her teeth, Fang Yuan, if I die, can you live? Rest assured, I am behind you. Fang Yuan rested his back on the cliff, as he willed and a blood moon goo flew out of his palm, flying towards Bai Ning Bing. Take it, and use it well. Blood Moon Goo originated from Moonlight Goo, so Bai Ning Bing was very familiar with it. With just a few uses, she got used to it, and the bright red moon blades stabilized the situation. But good situations did not last, and although Bai Ning Bing regained her footing, her primeval essence was starting to become insufficient. Chapter 204 Carapace Goo and Crocodile Strength Goo Ordinary rank 3 Goo Masters, to deal with beast groups, they have to employ kiting tactics. Using primeval stones to recover their primeval essence, 
Binding Bing's method of facing them head-on and lasting until now was already outstanding. If a Goo Master's primeval essence runs dry, their battle strength will drop down to rock bottom. Binding Bing started to look back at the cliff behind her, wondering if there was a way to escape. When she saw Fang Yuan's casual expression while he was leaning against the cliff, she flew into a rage, scolding, Fang Yuan, I fight at the front lines, yet you watch the show behind me. Fang Yuan snorted, the former Northern Dark Ice soul physique, the Grand Binding Bing, can't even deal with a hundred beast group. Binding Bing was exasperated, if you have the guts, then you go and fight. Fang Yuan laughed coldly, if I had rank three cultivation, it is enough to eliminate all these six-legged crocodiles, why would I need you? Binding Bing breathed loudly, smoke coming out of her pores. Fang Yuan said seriously, Binding Bing, I can tell you're used to fighting without restraint. You are a former Northern Dark Ice Soul Physique, but now that you are a grade with 90%, if you still keep fighting like that your primeval essence will definitely be insufficient. An outstanding Goo Master will use their primeval essence in the most efficient way, never wasting a drop. From now on, battle according to my instructions. Your fighting method is too crude, you have to be more meticulous now. Huh? Binding Bing's lips twitched. My battle method isn't meticulous enough. Do you know how many times the clan leader and elders praised me for being the number one skillful fighter in Bai clan? What's there to compare with a bunch of scrubs? Listen closely. Bai Ning Bing laughed coldly three times, but Fang Yuan continued talking. His voice entered Bai Ning Bing's ears. At first she was indifferent, but eventually her expression changed. It went from disdain to seriousness and finally turning grave. Fang Yuan's words hit the nail right on the head. There was profound meaning in every word, perfectly describing her inability. This was the collection of his 500 years of life, the essence left behind through the accumulation of time. How could it not let this youngster, naive and innocent, be extremely shocked? Fang Yuan lived for 500 years, so he was as sly as a fox. His experience was something not even First Gen Gu Yu or Sky Crane Lord could match with. These two old geezers lived for almost a thousand years, but most of their life was spent in deep sleep, retaining that last breath of theirs. Their true, living phase was merely two to three hundred years at most. If it was any other time, Bai Ning Bing upon hearing Fang Yuan's advice would merely take it as a joke. She was a proud, arrogant genius, even if she was shocked, she would not follow suit. But now, facing the crocodile's pressure, her body could not help but execute what he said, and it showed an immediately effect. Six-legged crocodiles continued to die, but her situation improved by leaps and bounds. Her primeval essence and stamina were depleted, but once she started using them carefully and reduced her meaningless attacks while increasing her attack effectiveness, it caused her primeval essence and stamina to slowly recover amidst battle. Fifteen minutes later, after at least half the pack of six-legged crocodiles were injured and over two hundred corpses on the ground, they finally stopped attacking and started to retreat. Soon after, a large body appeared from under the water. It had two rows of sharp blade-like teeth. Its yellow vertical pupils reflected Binding Bing's body as it emitted a cold killing intent. This was the six-legged crocodile king. Hundred Beast King level, Grand Crocodile King. Different from other six-legged crocodiles, this crocodile king was larger like a yak, and it did not stand on six legs, but only moved with its two hind legs. It walked like humans, with a back as thick as a bear and a scaly tail dragging a line across the beach. The other four feet that were free were in a claw shape. Resembling forearms, they were thick and the muscles were tough as rocks. Binding Bing could not help but laugh bitterly. If she was fighting this hundred beast king alone, she could win. But now that she had undergone an intense battle and there was little primeval essence and stamina left in her, she could not deal with this hundred beast king who was in perfect condition. But at this time, Fang Yuan's voice came from behind her, Catch. A blue and white light entered her aperture, turning into a lotus and rooting deep into her aperture sea. 
Immediately, her primeval sea level started rising. Bai Ning Bing was surprised and overjoyed. What goo is this? Heavenly Essence Treasure Lotus, Fang Yuan said. So this is the Heavenly Essence Treasure Lotus. No wonder first Gen Gu Yu wanted it. Bai Ning Bing sighed again, then scolded. You have such a goo, why didn't you lend it to me earlier? Fang Yuan chuckled, talking while minding his own business. Thankfully, this is only a hundred beast king. Remember, its weakness is that white skin near the chest. Saying so, his body faded like ripples on the water surface, and he slowly vanished. He activated the stealth scale goo. Scheming and cunning, Bai Ning Bing scolded before focusing her gaze on the Grand Crocodile King. Only to see that on its chest, there was indeed a white skin, but it was only face-sized and was protected by its four limbs. How could she strike that area easily? Howl, the Grand Crocodile King growled before rushing at Bai Ning Bing. Bai Ning Bing could only rely on herself and roll around desperately, evading the hits and flicking her wrist at the same time. Chainsaw Golden Centipede smashed on the Grand Crocodile King's back. Sparks flew as the Chainsaw Golden Centipede was rebounded, almost causing Bai Ning Bing to trip from the impact. There was a white scratch on the Grand Crocodile King's back armor, but other than that it was unfazed. Howl! It swung its tail and winds flew. Bai Ning Bing only saw a black whip approaching thick, large, and long. She could not evade it, so she was only able to activate the sky canopy goo. With a bang, she was sent flying, landing tens of meters away. Afterwards, she slammed on the tough, sturdy cliff walls. Bai Ning Bing was in so much pain until she drew a deep breath. Sky canopy goo is a rank 3 goo, having great defense, but it could not reduce the force from impacts. Bam bam bam. The Grand Crocodile King's thick strong legs left a strong imprint on the beach as it charged towards Bai Ning Bing. Bai Ning Bing's eyes shone, seeing the Grand Crocodile King's attack, she did not move. The Grand Crocodile King came crashing with its imposing aura, flashing its claws. If it was any other person, they would be scared shitless or run away in fear, but Bai Ning Bing was after all Bai Ning Bing, possessing an iron will. 20 steps, 15 steps, 10 steps, 5 steps. Seeing the Grand Crocodile King was near, at the final moment, Bai Ning Bing leapt. Bam! She narrowly evaded the Grand Crocodile King, and the latter crashed into the cliff walls as large amount of debris fell and buried it. A beast is a beast after all. Bai Ning Bing laughed loudly, about to chase after it, but suddenly thought of something and stopped. The next moment, the Grand Crocodile King's tail swept and sent the debris flying all over the place. Bai Ming Bing observed silently, and a moment later the Crocodile King finally got free. It was in a desperate state. Half its teeth were broken and blood flowed out of its nostrils, its golden pupils also turned red. It growled furiously at the sky and lowered its body, rushing towards Bai Ning Bing at an even faster speed. Bai Ning Bing retreated, smiling as she dodged. Bam! With a huge bang, the cliff walls collapsed and smoke flew everywhere. An hour later, the injured Grand Crocodile King covered its white skin in futile as blood continued to ooze out of its wounds. Soon after, it plopped on the ground on the beach that was completely wrecked by the battle. This blood moon goo is pretty useful, huh? With that bleeding effect, I can kill that Grand Crocodile King so easily. Bai Ning Bing looked at the Red Moon insignia, thinking in her mind. After the Crocodile King died, the remaining hundred six-legged crocodiles lost their drive and morale, escaping into the river one by one. Finally over. Bai Ning Bing shook the chainsaw golden centipede on her hand away, sitting on the beach in exhaustion. Fang Yuan's figure came out of the shade, squatting at the Crocodile King's corpse and searching. Found it. When he took back his hand, there was one goo in each of his palms. Bai Ning Bing seeing this, breathed heavily in anger. She fought so intensely with the Crocodile King, finally killing it and chasing the crocodile group away. But the unscathed Fang Yuan came out to collect the battle rewards instead. Fang Yuan took a close look. These two goo, one was almost dying, but still struggling. 
It had a turtle shell around palm size, but its protruding surface was covered in crocodile scales. The carapace goo. Another was uninjured, but was not moving at all, letting Fang Yuan squish it with his fingers. The CR crocodile strength goo. It was very small, smaller than a finger. It was like a mini crocodile with head, body, and tail, but did not have any legs. Both the carapace goo and the CR crocodile strength goo were rank 2 goo worms. Normally, 100 beast kings have rank 2 goo living in them. In the Thousand Beast King, there was rank 3, and in the Myriad Beast King, there was rank 4. As I expected, Fang Yuan seeing the two goo did not feel strange. He was experienced and after observing the battle, he had seen through the Crocodile King's abilities. Immediately, he leaked a little of the Spring Autumn Cicada's aura and refined these two goo with his primeval essence instantly. The carapace goo flew to Fang Yuan's back, forming a large scale insignia like a tattoo. It extended from Fang Yuan's shoulder to his waist, covering his entire back. As with the name, it was a goo that could enhance the defense of a goo master's back. See our crocodile strength goo turned into a dim yellow light entering Fang Yuan's aperture. It was similar to the black and white boar goo, able to increase the goo master's strength permanently by the strength of a crocodile. It had high market value, normally a precious goo worm without any available in the market. This again, instantly refining a goo worm, seeing this, Binding Bing could not continue but be furious as her pupils dilated to pin size. When she fought Fong Yun earlier, she found this secret. Back at the clan, she searched the records and checked up on some assistance type goo that can achieve this effect. But at this moment, as she witnessed the scene again, she felt that the truth might be different. This guy has so many trump cards, Sky Canopy Goo, Blood Moon Goo, and Chainsaw Golden Centipede aside, but even the Heavenly Essence Treasure Lotus. His battle tactics are also completely superior to the clan's teachings. Also, what goo did he use earlier? Thinking of this, a cold chill went down by Ning Bing's spine. Chapter 205 Sleeping in the Treetop Roarer The sky was getting darker as the, the river surged and ebbed. At dusk, the beach was colored red with crocodile blood, and hundreds of six-legged crocodile corpses were lying all around two youths. From beside one particular gigantic crocodile corpse, Fang Yuan slowly stood up. He did not have any thoughts of fleeing when the six-legged crocodile groups had attacked. Although he only had rank 1 initial stage cultivation, he had Bai Ning Bing who was a rank 3 peak stage Gu Master. Her cultivation base added with his rank 3 goo worms were more than enough to annihilate a hundred beast group. On one hand, he was in need of an external force like the six-legged crocodile groups to oppress Bai Ning Bing and also take the chance to train her. On another hand, he also needed to find suitable goo worms for himself. I might only be at rank 1 initial stage, but with my agrade aptitude and heavenly essence treasure lotus, my primeval essence recovery speed is fast enough to let me use rank 2 goo worms. But what a pity that both the crocodile strength goo and carapace goo aren't really ideal for me, Fang Yuan sighed as he pondered in his mind. Sky Canopy Goo was a rank 3 defensive goo which he lent to Bai Ning Bing. Now he needed a suitable defensive goo for himself. However, the carapace goo's defensive area was too small in that it could only defend his back. And even though Crocodile Strength Goo was a precious goo, Fang Yuan already had the strength of two boars, strengthening further would instead harm him. Below rank 6, Goo Masters only possessed a mortal body which had a limit in how much it could endure and couldn't be strengthened continuously. Fang Yuan already used the black and white boar goo to remodel his body and increase his fundamental strength. Using the crocodile strength goo would surpass what his body could endure and would only harm him. That is to say, unless he found other goo worms which could supplement for the crocodile strength goo, he would be committing a suicidal act by using it. In the inheritance inside Bai Goo Mountain, there is a jade bone goo which can increase the strength of the goo master's bones. After using this goo, there would be no problem in using the crocodile strength goo. However, there is still quite a distance from Bai Goo Mountain, 
and it will take at least 10-15 days. Fang Yuan gazed at southeast direction, then he willed and summoned the crocodile strength Gu. He gave the crocodile strength Gu to Bai Ning Bing and at the same time called back the heavenly essence treasure lotus. Use this crocodile strength Gu, it will let you gain the strength of a crocodile. The process will be a bit tough, but it should be done after you repeatedly activate it for a month, Fang Yuan instructed. Bai Ning Bing nodded, she was inwardly happy. With the crocodile strength goo, she could make up for her weak strength. She had looked for such a goo back when she was in Bai clan, but she had no luck in finding such goo. To think that she unexpectedly found the goo which she had always wanted out in the wild. Dangers lurked everywhere when goo masters journeyed outside, but at the same time, there were plenty of opportunities. Let's go, the blood odor here is too concentrated and will definitely attract the wild beasts, the cliff is also almost collapsed, it will be dangerous to camp here. Bai Ning Bing approved of Fang Yuan's proposal. But before leaving, Fang Yuan gathered as much of the crocodile blood and flesh as he could and stored them in the Tusita flower. Crocodile strength Gu's food was crocodile flesh and the fresh crocodile blood could be used to feed the blood skull goo and blood moon goo. The sun had already completely disappeared into the horizon and the night fell. Numerous stars could be vaguely seen in the sky. The cliff had collapsed by the Grand Crocodile King's attack, becoming easier to climb. After Fang Yuan and Bai Ning Bing climbed the cliff, a dense jungle welcomed them. The jungle seemed to continue on and on, touching the shadows of the faraway mountains. Furthermore, the depths of the jungle were covered in deep darkness, concealing unknown dangers and beasts. Chichihauhu. A series of odd noises sounding like the cries of birds or the howling of the apes resounded in the two youths' ears. The two glanced at each other, realizing that the dangers lurked everywhere in the jungle. More so during the nighttime, where there were scarce light, the jungle became more dangerous than during daytime. They had no other choices, however. Let's go, Fang Yuan hinted at Bai Ning Bing. Bai Ning Bing grinded her teeth, but she had no choice other than to drag her extremely tired body and walk in front, opening a path for Fang Yuan. The trees in this jungle were at least four meters tall, and being close to the river, the air was filled with moisture and the soil was much softer than normal soil. Under this warm and moist atmosphere, moss grew wildly, spreading over the ground, rocks, and tree trunks. The darkness deepened, and the chillness increased as the deeper they went into the jungle. Fang Yuan was still in a better condition, Bai Ning Bing, however, shivered from cold. She had just engaged in an intense battle, and her whole body was soaked with sweat. Right now, as the chill invaded her body, she naturally felt much more cold. Hey, how about making a fire and warming ourselves first? Bai Ning Bing spoke while scouting in front. Her voice echoed within the jungle, making the quietness of the jungle even more prominent. Warm ourselves? Ha ha! Fang Yuan laughed. Don't you feel that this jungle is too quiet? Let's stop and check the trees in front. Bai Ning Bing slowed down her steps and concentrated. The trees in front of them were short and thick, with twisted roots that spread over on the ground. The ends of the branches all grew out into vines like green pythons, either coiling around each other or dropping down into the ground. The tip of the vines were like Venus flytrap or like mussels with open shells, quietly waiting for the prey. Beast Trap Tree! Bai Ning Bing thought of what he had learned in the academy and recognized this tree. This tree was carnivorous, and the ends of its branches had softened down to become vines with only two leaves on the ends. The leaves were wide and big and would normally remain open like a giant open mouth. However, once a prey walks close, the vines would shoot like a snake and the leaves would snap shut, swallowing the prey. Afterward, the tree would secrete acidic liquid and melt down the prey over the course of tens of days or even months before absorbing it. Bai Ning Bing counted the amount of beast trap trees in front of him. There were at least 30 to 40. There were some distance between each trees upon which grew ordinary trees. This is the area of beast trap trees, no wonder it was so quiet with no signs of any living creatures. 
but it isn't a problem, I can forcefully open up a path with a rank three Gu, Bai Ningbing said. Fang Yuan, however, shook his head, we need a safe campsite right now, and from how I see it, this area of beast trap trees looks pretty good. We might not necessarily find a safer place to spend the night in this dense jungle if we charge through this area. Bai Ningbing couldn't help opening up her eyes wide when she heard what was said, in this place, these beast trap trees are safer. Fang Yuan glanced at her, but didn't explain. Instead, he turned around and walked back through the way they had come. Bai Ningbing grinded her teeth. Yang Gu was with Fang Yuan, so she had no choice but to follow Fang Yuan back to the beach. Fang Yuan chose two sturdy crocodile corpses and opened up their cut bellies. He removed the internal organs and cleaned it thoroughly before dragging the corpses back to the jungle. You are actually thinking of? Bai Ning Bing was smart, and as she saw this, she already could vaguely guess Fang Yuan's motive. She couldn't help but be amazed by Fang Yuan's creativity. Humans are above all creatures, having unbound wisdom. Thinking up odd ways to survive is normal. We will sleep inside these today, Fang Yuan said, and after explaining what to do, he entered inside a crocodile belly. The next moment, he rolled inside and got closer to a beast trap tree in the six-legged crocodile's body. Swish, the nearest vine pounced as swift as the wind. The huge open two leaves swallowed the whole crocodile corpse in one bite and then firmly closed together. Following next, the vines twisted and gently supported the heavy leaves to the treetop. Go to sleep, we still need to continue on our journey tomorrow. The leaves on the treetop shook for a moment before Fang Yuan's voice traveled out. Bai Ning Bing was dumbstruck on the spot, watching this scene with open mouth. She came to her senses only after a long while. The darkness completely enveloped the land, and the night wind gently blew and passed through the jungle, producing sounds like that of a sob. Bai Ning Bing clenched her teeth, and just like how Fang Yuan demonstrated, she drilled into the crocodile belly and rolled towards a beast trap tree. Almost immediately, she felt the attack of an external force, causing the whole crocodile body to shake for a while. After the shaking, she sensed herself slowly rising up. Finally, the force lifting her stopped. Bai Ning Bing was lying inside the crocodile's belly, and the crocodile belly was lying flat inside the leaves. She gazed outside, and her sight passed through the small crack in the closed leaves, landing upon the many stars in the sky. The surroundings were extremely quiet, and the stars were shining brightly like mischievous kids winking at her. The sky is filled with stars, our luck is good, the weather is going to be good tomorrow. Fang Yuan's voice came from outside. Bai Ning Bing didn't reply, she moved her body to get into a more comfortable position. However, she still felt cold due to the ice-cold crocodile body. At this moment, she got a whiff of a fragrant scent. Bai Ning Bing wasn't surprised as Fang Yuan had already explained this to her. This was the acidic liquid being released by the beast trap tree. However, this acidic liquid would need at least three months to melt the crocodile body. Hence, hiding inside the crocodile body was very safe for the moment. Oh right, I better use the crocodile strength goo first, and then sleep. Bai Ning Bing thought inwardly, but her eyelids seemed to be as heavy as a mountain, gradually shutting close. The next moment, she was in a deep sleep. She was too tired. First it was continuously drifting for five days and five nights, then it was the intense battle with the crocodile groups. And in the battle, she had surpassed her physical limits and unearthed a part of her potential. Maybe it was because she had turned into a female, the pressure from Fang Yuan intentionally or otherwise, it made her exhausted in both body and mind. Fang Yuan, however, wasn't asleep. From within the crocodile body, he called out the Tusita flower and took out some cotton clothes and cloak. He then divided these into two parts, one part for a cushion under his body, another part for covering his body. Although he tossed around, this layer of preparation immediately brought him some warmth. Under the cage of the leaves, the crocodile body changed into a pleasant hotbed. Fang Yuan still had some energy left, 
he closed his eyes and fell into meditation, using his primeval essence to nurture his aperture. He might have no liquor worm to upgrade his primeval essence, but with the assistance of Heavenly Essence Treasure Lotus and his agreed aptitude, the amount of time he could nurture his aperture increased by a great amount. The primeval sea was turbulent, rising and falling as its waves cleansed the aperture walls. Every time the primeval essence was consumed, it would be immediately replenished. Even continuing to nurture the aperture for a whole night wouldn't be able to exhaust the primeval essence. However, Fang Yuan did not do such a thing, for nurturing the aperture couldn't replace sleep. He stopped cultivating after midnight and went to sleep. He was a light sleeper and was able to hear the vague sounds of the wind and the howling of beasts in his sleep. Many wild beasts were attracted to the odor of the blood in the beach and trudged through the jungle towards it. And when they passed through this area of trees, they were captured by the beast trap trees.